Good morning, folks. It's Richard Gene, the fishing machine here. Well, let's talk about bait modifications. And I'm going to go into this one. A underspin happens to be, or it is right now, my favorite presentation for big crappie. When you're talking about big crappie, this bait right here is going to be hard to beat. It's a type of bait also that you can c cover a tremendous amount of water with to locate crappie, especially if they're up shallow. So this little modification that I'm going to show you, which I've shown before, but it's been a long time, and there's a lot of people who's joined the channel who's just now getting into fishing or there's some people that's been fishing for years that's just now getting into crappie fishing. Either way, I want to show this modification one more time. Now, this bait right here is a road runner. It's a 1 16th of an ounce road runner. It's my favorite size to fish in shallow water with. <clears throat> I can cover a tremendous amount of water with this bait and I like it because it has a size 4 hook on it. Now, Roadrunner also makes a 1 32nd of an ounce Roadrunner, just like this one, exactly. But I like it more for bluegill. But at times, crappie will eat it up too. But the modification that I'm going to show y'all, well, is second to none. It will allow you to fish this bait a lot slower and which slower is more precise when it comes to fishing. All right, folks, here's how they come out of the pack right there. And I buy them. I don't want them pre-rigged. I want them to be just like that when I buy them. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do, this is a 1 16th of an ounce Roadrunner. I'm going to turn it into about a 1 32nd of an ounce Roadrunner. Uh, which the 132nd ounce Roadrunners comes with a size 6 hook. This one has a 4. A size 4 hook is really more suited for the bigger crappie. And it's a longer hook than a size 6. So that's the reason why I'm lightening this particular 1 16th of an ounce bait up. So I want to make it half of what it is right, right there. I don't want to have to reel it real quick. I want to be able to reel it slow and keep it in the strike zone longer. So what I'm going to do is take these side cutters and I'm going to cut half of this lead off, lead off right there. See, that's about half of it. I've already reduced the weight of this bait in half. That's a good thing. I'm going to build the, the reel it much slower and keep my presentation in front of the fish for a much longer period of time. Okay, so that's what you have right there. Another thing is, which y'all are going to see right here pretty quick, is that the whatever bait, um, uh, um, artificial that you choose to use, uh, will snug up to the head, the bottom of, of that lead a lot neater, a lot neater. But first of all, let's do this. Folks, when I go fishing, I like to fish. I do not like a jig that's on, whether if it's on a plain jig head or an underspin, to every time I get a bite, Oh, and miss a fish to slip. So this is why I'm doing this right now. I don't like to adjust and keep readjusting every other cast, then make a cast. When I go fishing, I want to go fishing. So what I'm going to do, this is non-waxed dental floss. And I'm going to start here at the head of the bait. And I'm going to wrap this thing twice. Once down it, like this to about right there and then I'm going to go back towards the head 
Y'all excuse me, it's <laughs> a little bit difficult. Not much, I can handle it. And go all the way back up to the head, so that's just two wraps. Then I'm gonna take these two tag ends and tie two overhand knots or granny knots. Y'all hold on, y'all get the gist of it though. There's one, let me do another one real quick. There's two. Okay, and that's what you end up with. Now I'm gonna cut those two tag ends off with a pair of scissors. And you see that little bit of fuzz left past the knot. Well, I'm just gonna take a cigarette lighter shrink it up like that then I'm gonna take this dental floss and push it towards the head real tight like that just like that okay let's go get us a bait now I'm gonna tell you there's a lot of different ones that I use on these underspins and I have two of my favorites and I've used a lot of them I've used Bobby Garland baits on the back of them I've used uh, curly tails on the back of them. Oh my goodness, through the years I've used everything on the back of them, but so far, this is my favorite. This is a Z-Man Micro Finesse Shad Fry Z, inch point seven five. An inch and three quarter long. Quarter inch shy of two inches. This is my favorite, favorite bait so far. And, tough bait. You can catch crappie after crappie after crappie after crappie, one after another all day long using this bait. But I'm going to show you something that happens sometimes and, and there's nothing you can do about it. All you got to do is just get you another bait. Sometimes I can fish with this bait all day long. One bait and it won't tear up the way I'm fixing the to rig it but right here if y'all see where I stretch this out see how thin that is well it needs to be that way for this bait to have that perfect little tight action that it does and believe you me this bait has a perfect little wobbling action like this it's just a tiny swim bait that's all it is folks and as far as the color, this color right here will work in all conditions. All conditions. All clarity of waters, water. So this is by far my favorite, most dependable color to throw. Even though I have them all. Um, but most days that will work. No matter what when it comes to cropping. Uh, the electric chicken color. Okay. Here's the, the modification that I make on the little bait. As you can see on the sides, see these little bump outs? Those are representing eyes. But what I do to make the bait more streamlined so to come through the water cleaner, uh, especially when you're talking about an underspin. Now it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter if you're just using a jig. But on an underspin, it does. I want it to come through the water just, just as clean as possible. Just so, y'all like that sound effect. So what I do is take a pair of scissors and I cut those flush with the bait. All right, I cut those eyes off so they'll be flush. But there you have it. See how those eyes are gone? Okay, so it's gonna come through the water straight and perfect. Now, right here is the deal right here. You can see this slit right here. I got my hook in it. Right there is where we want to come out. What I'll do is gauge it just like that, folks. And you can see where the bend of that hook is going to come out. Right there, y'all can see that. It's about 1 16th of an inch above where that slot stops. So now I know. So I'm gonna go right in the center of the bait. 
And it's very important, let me stress this, to rig this bait just as straight as you possibly can. It's the last tag. So if you fail the first time, the second time, the third time, the fourth time, just keep trying because you're not ruining the bait. These baits are stretchy, just like Nico Helgramite products. They're tough. So make sure this dude is on straight. Take your tag. Y'all can see how streamlined that is there. There's no kink in it here. Okay. I'm going to pull this back right here. And this is the type of glue that I use. Some glues causes a chemical reaction with this plastic. And also with Nico products. But this glue won't. And this is uh, through trial and error. I have ruined a lot of baits until I finally discovered this glue here. A few years back. It's Loctite Super Glue. It will not cause <clears throat> a chemical reaction using this glue. In other words, I can glue this bait up and put it up. And if I want to use it a year from now, go get this bait and it'll be the same as if I just glued it without any uh, distortions or anything else. Great glue for this. And it will hold, folks. Now what I'll do is put a little glue, not too much, that was almost too much, onto, onto that uh, dental floss. And then we'll push it up tight. But I'm not done. I'm not done at all. What I want to do is take this bait like this and get it perfect centered. I don't want the bait to be rolled. I want it to be straight with that hook. Okay, like that. And like that. Now when that dries, folks, I'm gonna tell you what, you don't have to worry about readjusting and fixing and tweaking. This bait right here will stay that way. Uh, a couple fishing trips. This bait right here has the perfect action for big crappie. Oh! Oh! Golly! This is a good one. Let's see what we got. This is a good one, folks. This ain't no little bitty baby. My goodness, look what a crappie. Look at here. Now, that's what I'm talking about right there. Let's see if we can flip him. Oh, man, I shouldn't have tried that. Golly, what a crappie. Look here. Y'all see that? That is a big one. Right there. My, 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 my. There he is, folks. That's a good, good fish right there. I'm gonna put him in the bucket. Now this bluff right here, I've tried, <laughs> I've been all over the place. This one right here has a lot of life. Now, excuse me, I got a jo Jolly Rancher. Has a lot of bluegill, skipjack herring. And the main thing it has is a lot of shad showing up on a depth finder. Look here, let's put him in the bucket. Right, that's two good ones right there. Let's see if we can do that again. Now, what I did is I had to get away from the beetle spin. I got one bite on it, <laughs> and I thought I could work it out to where I could catch them on a beetle spin. Usually when I do, they're the better fish, but I had to go back to a, that's right, an underspin. And uh, that's one of my favorite colors right there. It is a clear water color, dingy, muddy. It don't make any difference. That fish, well, was around five feet deep, over 10 feet of water. So maybe that's what they're doing. And I, and I have seen a few shad, well, that's 11 feet of water, a few shad show up, so 
that's what we're going to do. We're going to see if we can't. There's another fish right there. Look here. Look in here. We're putting it together now. It took some time. But now fishing is that way. It ain't always easy. Okay. That's a good fish right there. Let's flip him in. He's too big to flip in. <laughs> But I did. The reason why I'm doing this is because I didn't bring a dead blame net. Doggone it. So that's three big crappie. Let's put him in the bucket. Wow. Three good ones. And I caught those two, two biggest ones real quick. Boom, boom. That's the way it works. Now I got, make another cast right there. I got a little tout before that fish committed. And I don't know if it was that fish or a different fish. But those fish are definitely suspended five feet under the surface over 10, 11 feet of water. So now that may be a good little pattern to work with. Crappie are suspending fish. So whatever depth of water you're fishing in, like, like these bluffs and stuff, especially this time of the year, if a cold front knocks them off of the bank a little bit, they'll usually suspend about halfway of whatever depth of water you find them in. So that part don't surprise me. There he is. That's crappie. I've caught several different species of fish here in the last 30 minutes, but this one is a crappie. Look at there. I'd give, let's see, let's see. Let's try to flip him in. Quit. Oh, I don't like to do that. Not with these old big sow cows. Not like the, these right here. These are sow cows. Folks, big old crappie. Let's put him in the bucket. See, patience. That's what what it's all about is patience. I've talked to several people down here, and they're not doing any good. They was asking me, Richard, Gene, what do I need to do? And, and I told them exactly. Do what you normally don't do. Fish waters that you normally don't fish. It works, folks. <clears throat> Search in places that you normally wouldn't fish in bad conditions like this. But really, the main thing is to make sure they're shad. And I stress that. My goodness, I stress it. And we got a lot of little shad right in here. In fact, a while ago, they was up on the surface flipping. A few of them was, and they're real small. Just right for crappie to eat. That fish was deep too. There's another one, folks. I got them. I got these fish found. They're off the bank. That's a big one. That's a good fish right here. They're off the bank, and they'll do that. When the front comes in, they'll jump up I'll, they'll, they'll, they'll pull off the bank and get in this deeper water. Now, the, the way this one's hooked, I'm going to have to lip this one. Quit. No, you don't do it. Look at there, what a fish. These are good eating size crappie. That's about all they are to it. Just good eating size crappie. Actually, big ones. The filleting kind. I've got some fish fount right here. Look at there. Whoa. They ain't nothing like the sport of fishing. I want to sing y'all a song. Well, later. Let's put this one in the bucket. Whoa. Look at there. What some big Jim dandies I'm talking about. That crappie bit hard, and the reason is is because there's several there. 
you know there's quite a few fish out here right down through there and they're about three feet deep so that bait's about three feet deep right there and it's just a steady steady methodical wind is all it's taking folks they another hard pulling thing i think this is the smallest one i've caught here let's see what we got let's flip him he's the smallest one but he's a good crappie <laughs> that's a great eating size i didn't i was ugh, i was doubting that i let me say it like this i was having a hard time folks doubting if i could find them you know but i did and we're catching them that just goes to show never give up let's put him in the bucket Woo. there he is my goodness we're mounting them up let's catch another one and quit these are just good eating size fish right here good filleting size crappie god bless each and every one of y'all thank y'all for all the great comments everything y'all have done for this channel this channel is growing fast i'm talking about it is blowing up and it's all because of y'all and i greatly appreciate it i guarantee you hey whoa dog On it, you. And remember, go fishing when you can, because it's good food.